the music industry is, industry is shutting down and that has implications for what you might be doing for your rollouts mm -hmm. um the people you might be trying to connect with mm -hmm. and even the way you're able to market your music so we're going to talk about that we're going to talk about that jacoria i'll let you lead the way when it comes to let's start with spotify and how things change around spotify this time of year yeah so this is the time of the year where you are reminded that these are just people with a job <laughs> um, and they all as ma as amazing as a lot of them might be at their job it's still just a job to them and they want to go home and do nothing <laughs> and be with their family so uh, i th actually think spotify might already be on vacation if not it it'll probably be maybe within a week or so after this this podcast episode coming out and that's the biggest thing with with them spotify apple pretty much all of the major dsps when they go on their breaks editorial playlists are a lot harder to get uh, you might have that one person in the building or your rep that likes you enough to continue pushing you. You could be a big enough artist where, you know, they wake you up like, hey, bro, now you're on vacation, but Drake just dropped, put that, put that man in the playlist, right? So there are some, some caveats to people that can kind of get around it, but for majority of artists, like, you are probably not getting editorial placements right now. Yeah. Um, or it's going to be very, very hard for you to even pitch yourself an editorial placement because they're not checking their email, bro. They don't break, you know, they, they, they're out doing things. Um, so if your marketing strategy is very editorial reliant and you are not a big enough artist to kind of circumvent that, or you don't have a strong enough relationship with your rep, so were they willing to, you know, leave their family for a little bit to help you out, <laughs> then it's, it's probably not worth it to be dropping music, you know, or, or dropping songs that you want to have that type of a push. If you're just dropping such as to give your fans something and to hold them over, then yeah, of course you can still do it right. But if you're like, no, I need this shit to go, this shit really need to go, and eh, they'll probably ain't time for that, you know? Yeah, it's not a chance. It's not like really, you know, it's almost too, no, it's too late already, mm -hmm. right? You really should look at October as your last month mm -hmm. to plan ahead because. Hey, if I can't schedule this thing before I leave the office, <laughs> <laughs> then it's not gonna happen. I'm not about to come out like you said, unless it's one of the big ones that you know things move. Oh, I really like it. Right? Like it's, Sam, Sam got his artists in some playlists, but he was telling me like the relationship they have with their their editorial person. Like she really likes him, so she was willing to be like, all right, I I, I help you out. And she didn't get him nothing yeah. massive, but she got him a couple of things to show like, hey, I fuck with you. I'm still on break. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's important. That's when we always go back to the importance of relationships. Yeah. Relationships. And that's established over time. Mm -hmm. It's not like he came in, some had some major label, give him these or anything. That's a direct relationship contact built over time. Yeah. All right. So relationships are, are, are definitely going to give you a little bit of extra leeway in this time of year. But for the most part, USOL and mm -hmm. just leave it at that. Yeah. Right. So that's Spotify. Now, another thing is advertising. I was just talking to somebody the other day, um, and my brother too, ironically. Two people, not even in music, but they're like trying to run ads for something, all right? Different things. And I was like, hey, y'all haven't done any type of, well, one person was doing a course, right? You haven't really sold anything online before. December ain't the time to start. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> especially if it's not even like oh it's a christmas specific winter i don't know a specific thing like no nah, it's not a time to just up oh, oh let me try to use my extra time to run some ads yeah. and hope to make some money this ain't that time <laughs> like the the numbers get heavy because you got to think it's more competitive in that time which means it's more expensive in that time yep and that's never going to change. So you think like, oh, well, I might catch people slipping because no one's going to be running ads because they know it's competitive. So maybe I actually hit them on a less competitive. Nah, that's not going to happen right. because these companies, these big companies, they work that into their numbers. Yeah, they don't we, care. <laughs> they don't care. <laughs> hey, we're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars, <laughs> billions of dollars. This is just what we do. Yeah. Period. It's not going to change. And we got to make shit happen for Christmas. Period. It's like you a little whoever with your 50 cent bid. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, you're not about to get this. We're prepared to lose lots of money to, to win over these customers. Hey, you're not. Facts. And so it. The, that it's also important to mention too. Like that's that's usually the most uh, the case in most of the the, the bigger countries. I, I don't know where I'm looking for. I don't want to say like first world countries, but the more 
Why don't you want to say it, Jaquil? I don't know, man. I feel like... I feel, feel like, dirty? Yeah, it feels, it feels <laughs> fucked up, you know? Let's say it's more of the consumer-centric countries, right? Okay. Let's, let's say that. It's like your U.S., your Canada, your United Kingdom is right. Like, those countries is a lot mm-hmm. more. You can probably still run ads in places that don't care as much about the holiday seasons or their holiday season is different. Mm. Um, you know, maybe your Brazil's, your India's, things like that. But most of you probably ain't trying to do that all the time. So I know what we tell clients is, hey, it's not saying it's a, it, it's a, it's bad to run ads during this time. You can still get good conversions. There are still going to be people. I would argue more people paying attention to social media, which is, which is so ironic about it, right? Right. Yeah, there's right. way more people looking, but it's more expensive at this time. But so it's like you can still pull an audience out. It just might be. You know, in August, your ad might have been getting you a 50 cent cost per click. And then December rolled around, that's just a dollar seventeen. You still may be getting high conversions. Maybe your music is still growing. I'll be at a slower rate. But you're still pulling quality people out. So I know we're telling clients. Let me take a quick second to say, if you're an artist trying to blow your music up, or if you're a manager, a music professional in general, trying to help an artist blow their music up, I have something that's a game changer for you. And it's completely free. As you may know, we've helped multiple artists go from zero to hundreds of thousands of streams. We've helped multiple artists go from hundreds of thousands to millions of streams, chart on Billboard, go viral, all of that stuff. And we've now made the way we've branded multiple artists and helped them go viral completely free, step by step in Brandman Network. All you have to do is check out brandmannetwork.com. You apply. It's completely free. But the thing is, we're not going to let everybody in forever. So the faster you apply, the better your chance of getting accepted. Brandmannetwork.com. Check it out. Back to the video. So I know we're telling clients, hey, there are going to be some platforms where we might advise you to just shut it down. Because I know for us, YouTube is typically one of the, the one we have the most issues with around holiday time. YouTube around this time, crazy. Oh yeah, the, the, damn near, damn near, such a hassle to work with. <laughs> Other ones, Facebook, yeah. TikTok, whatever, man, they get expensive. They're not, they're not like hard to work. We're not having like issues with them getting pushed through. Yeah. Um. So it's like, yo, there might be some where we completely advise you to shut it down altogether, and then there may be others where we say like, hey, this might be worth you just kind of biting the bullet and dealing with the higher cost per conversions or cost per clicks or whatever, because when you know, January, February rolls around and this shit stops. Usually it's around February. Like, what? Right when February rolls around and this shit stops and things are about to normal, all this data we built up, right? Like, all the, the, the brand value you've been building in the marketplace, like, that shit's going to damn near double, triple then because you, you, you're you not going to be starting over like all the artists who took December through or November through right, January. Right, right. So, but that, and that depends on what your plan is, right? Yeah, exactly. In the beginning of the year for whatever your rollout or your yearly plan is like at the beginning of year is really important. You got to get popping for whatever that um, reason that is. Like I know there's some people who are like last year, we had some people that really stressed wanting to be able to start doing some tours Mm -hmm. or do some shows like by March Mm -hmm. or whatever, which means we have to set up and create the fan base or the level, certain level of awareness that you'll be touring with. Right. Yeah. So things like that, then you probably want to start early, which means you could justify marketing at the end of the, the, uh, December. And really, you know, running through December, I would still probably advise not. Mm. But right after Christmas, like that was where we saw some success, like in between that. So what the six days in between Christmas and, and New Year's, like yeah. let it start. Then you go ahead and get that warmed up. That's enough. As long as you're spending enough money, you know. What, 20 to 50 dollars a day? In that period of time, like five dollars a day isn't really gonna warm you up. Like we're we're cool, we're cool with five dollars a day ads for people who want to do that, but you're not gonna get warmed up fast enough to see the results. Like what yeah. we're talking about, yeah, five dollars is like twenty cents during this time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So keep that in mind. But you know, even like you said, the attention is really there, which means content. Yes. This is the time for content to go hard on content and really you want to have momentum with content too. Like it's nice to already have an audience if you have been doing content all year to then just be able to use that extra time to go harder and take mm-hmm. advantage of attention. Yeah. Right. That's really going to be meaningful as the recession comes as well. But we'll get into that and like do a whole episode or video, like just breaking down some things artists can do or keep in mind for the recession times. But content is, it's something that, 
Look, you want to use this time to, to make happen. Yeah, bro. It's like, so if you don't want to spend that money anyway, might as well start figuring out the free, the free ways to do it. Figure out the free. Figure out the free. Now, with that being said, I want to, before we leave this, get into just a few promo ideas. Because some people, they don't like, they say, should I do a promotional idea? Like, I'm an indie artist. I mean, we're big in, in saying indie artists don't have to follow label moves, right? Mm-hmm. Just because of the industry shoots, uh, shuts down from a label standpoint, a corporate standpoint, it doesn't mean that an indie artist can't drop anything during yeah. December. Attention is attention. We just talked about, hey, people are at home. People are paying more attention online. So that could be a great time for you. You got less competition from a music standpoint Mm -hmm. right but there's some caveats like we know generally speaking a lot of people revert back to more like christmas type traditional um traditional type of music so now you compete with those but at the same time there's some things that you can pay attention to with the campaigns which we'll get into those specifics i want to start though with if you have a fan base already right yeah because if you have a fan base already, this is a great time to re-engage and create a reason to talk to your fans, mm-hmm. right? So let me see. Yes, we can offer a holiday merch deal. Like there's, I got a friend who every single year, the numbers he runs up on merch every December is ridiculous mm. right for multiple artists because he works with multiple artists on it and these are major artists and i didn't realize i didn't realize they took it so seriously to be honest mm. like it's almost like how toys are like these are going to be christmas gifts and that time of the year thing they treat it like that and i'm like are people really looking at i don't know drake merch like hey let me get that merch for christmas mm. or do they care the numbers say they care. Hey, that shit works. <laughs> <laughs> like the numbers that buddy be team like, oh man, we did three million last year, man. And and one year, um, like he was talking about how when COVID happened, that they did their normal thing, but the supply shortage was crazy. And all and since the shortage was what it was, all of a sudden the people who got uh, you know, bigger, bigger budgets, right? Those bigger companies. Those suppliers and vendors, they start moving towards those people. It's like, well, if somebody's gonna suffer, it's gonna be my small vendors. Yeah. Right. And yeah. these people are making a few million, but you know, these other people <laughs> that they're competing with are worth tens of millions and hundreds of millions worth of business, yeah. right? So that's something to consider. That might be, I don't know what it's like now. We do know the supply shortage still applies when it comes to merch, but I don't think it's anywhere near as crazy, obviously, as 2020 when it was a surprise. But he was like, yeah, man, I had to call all these backup suppliers, put in some threats, and, you know, I've been consistent <laughs> uh, with business, da 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 finally for them to go find <laughs> this one color because we had already sold, I don't know how much money in this color. These are, like, the real logistical things yeah. <laughs> that actually are, like, become really more important. Like, I know a lot of times we talk, we focus on getting views, getting growth, and making sales. But the actual running of the business <laughs> and dealing with that stuff is that really is the game. So yeah. once, once y'all get to that point, y'all y'all start to encounter those things. But but um, like doing something like that, right? Reengaging for merch, we know that that's important. Um, and merch can look like anything, not just clothes, obviously, or giving a single. Like, but not like, hey, I'm trying to grow and, and blow it up. Like, maybe you just want to say, hey, here's a special single for y'all, a song I recorded because you mm-hmm. already have a fan base. Or maybe just doing a special message. And it's like some video that's memorable mm-hmm. and you send it out to your fan base. Just you have to use if you already have fans. I don't care if it's just 100 on your email list. Mm-hmm. You got to take advantage of that moment to do something that like brands you in their memory. Yo, such and such hopped into a sleigh in the middle of the street and started rapping out of it. You know oh, what wow. I mean? Or <laughs> or he was sitting in the middle of the, of the intersection and, the, you know, people honking a horn at him. He got a sleigh, creating something, you know, just something that they're going to remember. Yeah. And then, you know, if you got a certain type of audience, maybe that's just showing love and healing, whatever that looks like. But you got to use it to at least as an excuse to stamp you in their memory 
an extra time and then you know make money if you down for that side of things too yeah i agree with that holiday time is definitely the best time for for community engagement because you can do so many th- things under the guise of like holiday spirit right like you say even That's like it's your chance to be more emotional be more vulnerable if you feel like you need to your chance to give away things that maybe you weren't gonna do something with anyway i got these songs that i hate i don't think that well maybe i hate but i got this song that i don't know if i'm ever gonna put out let me just give it to them as a gift. Right? I wasn't going to do nothing with it anyway. Let mm-hmm. me just make them feel like I'm doing something about them. So I agree. I think like now is the time to go back and figure out a way to rework your email list and work your SMS list. You know what I'm saying? Dust off that Discord group and get back in there and get active. You know, yeah. have some town hall meetings. Give it, like, you, you probably have more free time as an artist as well. Most of you, maybe, you know, mm-hmm. depending on age and things like that. So like take the time out to like talk to your audience a lot more. Do more live streams. Do more like I said, town halls and your different socials. Do and respond to more DMs and, and be more personable. You know, don't just write a three word message back. Send them a voice message. Right, send them a video. Exactly. Or something. You, you got don't, more time to do don't it. Don't just do that general. Thank you. I appreciate you guys. Y'all are so supportive. And then leave because there's so many people doing that. You're mm-hmm. not gonna be remembered. Mm-hmm. Yeah, bro. Hit them with the video message, man, or the hey, voice hey. message. They gonna they gonna download that shit, make it their home screen. You in there, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Some of the things roll back around you, great. So I, I do think I do like I do think that that that's what this time is for: community engagement, figuring out how to monetize. Because this is a low barrier way for you to figure out how to monetize. Because you can try a lot of things that you may not have normally gotten away with uh, the rest of the year under the guise of holiday season, yep. Black Friday deal, Christmas deal, Thanksgiving deal. Yo, yo, I want to sell these t-shirts that i couldn't sell the rest of the year i was selling them for 20 i want to get them off of, for 10 if i sell them at 10 any other time of the year people are gonna think oh it's because you can't get these t-shirts off if i sell them for 10 dollars now that's like oh it's a christmas deal you know what i'm saying like he, yep. he just fuck with us and thought <laughs> that's a christmas deal for it. <laughs> so exactly this is the it. time for you to get off a lot of those you know pricing bundling you know what i'm saying different merchandising options that might look a certain way the other you know nine ten months out of the year but now it's just like okay he's, he's making something work for the holidays holiday spirit man. <laughs> yeah just, holiday just spirit. another one of these mini deals i'm seeing at the time and it worked <laughs> it really does work like that's that's the part the stress yeah right? <laughs> it's like you think oh i'm just am i just writing stuff or everybody's doing it does it work even though everybody's doing it it's still it still hits all right so now with that being mind um another thing for the campaigns is the influencers, right? Yeah. We were talking about that. So the ads, Spotify, editorial playlists, and influencers. And in your words, they go back to being regular people go too. back to being regular people. Right? Um, to being- <laughs> so, <laughs> these superheroes, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> yeah, they, oh, I'm on vacation. Yep. And I can't tell you. You know, I feel bad sometimes. Like, cause I'll be like, like, no, go back to work. <laughs> <laughs> like, what do you mean? I just need you to post for this campaign. I remember one, we had a campaign that we were supposed to run and it, we had like 15 grand for that campaign. I fucking know exactly what yeah, you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. And it was December. They came to us December, you know, and like we couldn't really get off the money. Yeah. Because everybody was on vacation. It's like, bro, this is such a great opportunity. Such a big artist and all that, and everything that they're doing. There's so much money over here for us. We just need to make this thing work. And all these influencers, you know, want to take care of their mental health and shit. You know, yeah, <laughs> it's like, ah, I don't want to be like, go back to work. But, but do this one post. Yeah. F everybody else, but do this one post. So it's, it really is difficult and can be especially when you deal with influencers who can afford to yeah, not that's take the no big extra one. money yeah <laughs> or the ones who already aren't making a lot anyway so they really don't care you know yeah like i only get like one of these a month so mm-hmm. i can pass off on this one this month yep and the young ones the young ones oh, the, the young ones, ones. any the influencer young. under like 26 you probably gonna deal with it they on christmas break <sighs> you know what i'm saying they going on vacation with their parents Shit like that. That'd be the funny stuff, man. Yeah. Like, I'm with my parents. I'm like, oh man, I forgot that I'm dealing with a kid. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, we had one tell us, like, oh, you know, I'm on Christmas break and I just really wanted to enjoy my Christmas break, but I'll be back 
making things in January. I'm like, when you go back to school, this is the time for you to run your bag up, bro. You ain't got nothing but time. Bro, that's the confusing part <laughs> for me, bro. Because I'm like, when I was in school, that was opposite logic. Yeah. Like, how do you have more time during school and you just want to, like, you have a busy break like that? Yeah. My breaks weren't popping like that when yeah, I was young, man. I'm like, I'm sitting in the house just more time watching tv and shit like right. <laughs> until mom get back until those couple of days come that are popping like christmas or whatever yeah. you know it'll be concentrated but most of the break i'm not doing a thing well really and i don't know if a lot of influencers listen to us but if y'all do if i was you guys this would be the time where i would reach out to every marketing partner i've ever worked with anyone that's ever paid me for a campaign or post anything like that and i would reach out to them and let them know I'm available right now to do work if you need it. Because trust and believe we are not the only ones that struggle with this around oh, <laughs> around yeah. this time. That is a great idea. And it makes you look great. Like you like you can literally just be like, hey, hey, you know, hey Sean, bro, really enjoy working that twenty four K Golden campaign with you guys back in March. Just wanna let you know that even though the holiday times are up, I got a little free time this month. Let me know if you need anything from me again. Here's my last couple of posts. They've been doing great. Hope to hear from you soon. I'd be like, you know what? We do need somebody right now. Hey, I forgot sure about you. It. Like, I have this one TikTok influencer who DMs me every week asking me if we have campaigns. And he's massive. Like He has maybe like 15 million followers on TikTok. Maybe close to a million on Instagram and probably like 400k on YouTube. Man. Every week he DMs me and asks me if we have campaigns. He got that money making machine do, optimized, <laughs> man. Optimized. <laughs> Hey, bro, just checking in. Got anything coming down the pipeline? Like, nah, not this week, man. All right, holler at you next week, then. Next week, come around. <laughs> hey, bro, just checking in. Got anything coming down the pipeline? Nah, bro, we ain't really been doing a TikTok. And I was like, okay, right, check on you again. Like, every week, bro. I'm like, man, why can't all of them be like you? Bruh. <laughs> Closed mouths don't get fed. Unsent emails don't get open, man. Yeah. And those sent emails, they really do come in handy because we work with so many people, right? Mm. On the influencer end specifically. And you really do forget about some of them yeah. at times. Yeah. Right. And some fall off because of unreliability or something happens with the profile for a period of time. It's so much. It's always nice sometimes just to get that message, like exactly what you said. You're like, oh, man, I appreciate this. And since they hit me up, I'm probably not going to have to worry about a long lag Mm -hmm. and responsiveness and try to chase them down just so they can post. Like that goes a really, really long way for a marketer. And it's also a nice time, like, especially if I'm like a solo artist mm-hmm. or um, like a just a manager and an artist, right? Not a big agency or team. This is when, again, you go back to relationships and having those few people that you do a lot of business with time over time over time, because then they'll be more likely to open your message or at least give you a, a clear like, hey, I can't do it because the I can't do it because I'm going to be on vacation X, Y and Z is a lot better than just being unread and you're like yeah man i hope they reply i hope they reply i I could deal with not with knowing that they didn't ghost me out of nowhere you know what i mean so yeah y'all let people know because people are look as jacory said we appreciate it yeah exactly much much appreciate it so (laughs) i know around this time what we tend to try to well not we don't stray away from it but we use a lot less of them are Face for influencers, right? So your actual people, your TikTokers, mm-hmm. even to some degrees like YouTubers, streamers, things like that. Um, we found some success with just using like meme accounts. And I don't know what to call it. What we call them like music blog pages, right? Like your our generation music, your raps, your talk to pops. Pages like that because meme accounts and m- music blog accounts are basically just media outlets. And media outlets never plan to cut off, you know? Oh, yeah. Like, you never see a meme page go on Christmas break. You never Not see like our generation of music be posting on Christmas Day. They be posting on Thanksgiving. Somebody, mm-hmm. somebody got to post that. That no, they got to post that. Right. So hey. like those type of influencers, and you know, for some of you guys that's listening, think like that's not an influencer. Like for for us, we look at anybody with an audience as an influencer, right? If you're a meme page, a person, yep. a viral cat, you got an audience. You are an influencer in my eyes, right? So yeah. we're looking outside of okay, we can't use the dancers, we can't use the reactioners, and certain people. Or they're a lot harder to work with because they want to go spend time with family. But, yo, these meme accounts, these music blog pages, these um, viral content curation pages, these people run their operation like a media outlet. Media outlets never plan to cut off. Never. So they tend to work out a lot better, be more responsive, and get things up faster than this time, which is great because we're looking for ways to compensate for all these other sides of the influencers that we can't that we can't really use that much during this time. Exactly. Exactly. 
So, I mean, that's that. I really don't think there's anything to add to that. Now, just decide whether you're going to run a campaign or not during mm-hmm. Christmas, if you're going to release or not during Christmas. And we get that question all the time. Yes, you can do it, but you got to consider everything else that we just said. So we'll leave it at that. And I want to have some fun with something that you sent over. Oh, yeah, we're good. 